In order to record the audio from our NTSF-1, we'll need to connect it to a recording device. And this can be done by using the included breakout cable. This is a 10-pin XLR that separates into four regular XLR outputs. These four XLRs are color-coded and numbered for good reason. We'll need to keep an eye on their ordering and connect them to our preamp in the right sequence to make sure that the soundscape's perspective is captured properly. Each XLR carries the signal from one of the four capsules atop the NTSF-1, and if they're not connected in the correct order, the end result will sound phasey and warped. You can extend the lead with regular XLR cables if needed, just be extra careful to keep track of which XLR is carrying which signal. When choosing your recording device for an ambisonic recording with the NTSF-1, you'll need to consider two main things, phantom power and gain matching across four channels. When I refer to gain matching, I don't mean checking all the individual knobs to see if they're aligned properly. I mean digitally matched, so exactly the same level of gain across all four channels. There are plenty of options out there that have digital matching and phantom power. If you use sound devices Mix Pre 6 or 10, you'll need to link the first four channels by clicking the channel one mix knob and scrolling through to the linking section. Switching this to one to four will allow you to set the gain for channels one through to four using the first channel gain knob. The mix pre will allow you to monitor a down mix stereo or mono mix straight from the headphone jack. Once we have phantom power sent to all four channels and the level balance is set and matched across all channels, we're good to go.